filmed in front of a fake studio audience at Building 500, The Scott Newman Show, with your host, Scott Newman. Hi and hello, Smith Ranch Homes. It's your old pal, Scott, Scott Newman. Hope all is well where you are. This is The Scott Newman Show, and this is the fifth episode. Yeah! We, we did it. Forget third time's a charm. Fourth time was a charm. We finally did it. Last episode came out as cleanly as it probably ever will be, and the results were earth shattering. The amount of feedback we got from the residents probably combined the first three episodes together, and uh, we, <laughs> we finally have achieved the ability to be able to produce consistently, present reliably, and probably not be funny, but that's fine. That we can't really handle. Uh, that's due to skill. Um, but in terms of technicality ability, we, we got it. We found the key. So thanks for being patient. Um, some residents now are actually interested in watching the Scott Newman show now that it's not jerky and uh, coming across a Zoom interview, et cetera, online. So one thing we want to remind everybody is that if you missed today's episode, you can also check them again as reruns. Monday at 10.15 a.m. and now Wednesday at 2.15 p.m., we reply, replay the current episodes. Also remember, we have a Smith Ranch Homes YouTube channel. I'm not sure how many uh, subscribers we have at this point. I probably can count them on one hand. But here's a key thing that I, I'd like everybody who's in the audience and at home watching, pass the word along to family, to friends, to grandkids, to gardeners, to whomever else you need to share with. Uh, if we can get to a thousand subscribers, which probably is a, a pie in the sky dream, but if we can do that, we can actually broadcast live on YouTube. And the ability to do that probably won't affect this show. Um, nothing can really improve this. But what it can do is allow us to actually present um, performances and also board meetings, town hall functions, uh, other events live on the YouTube channel for you to log into and check it out on your phone, on your computer, elsewhere, and not just on channel 998. So please pass the, uh, the, the word. We, we would love to see maybe by the end of the year, keeping that as a goal, that'd be great. Um, we may even keep a tally every episode to see if we're increasing. What is increasing are our views. And I don't know, I mean, I'm geeking out here a little bit because, I don't know, we got 50 views on the last episode and that's just views on YouTube. I don't know how many people watch this at home. So there's at least 50 views there and probably maybe half of those were me watching it over and over again because I just love watching what we do here. But hey, those numbers are up and I wanna see it keep going up and up and up. So promote away. Um, and speaking of promotion, also on the YouTube channel, we're gonna have a special event next week. So you're watching this on Friday, May 29th. Janet Rallman, who uh, is our activities coordinator, is also a master gardener. A uh, presentation that she put together in the garden center. That's gonna air on Monday, June 1st at 11.30 a.m. and then rerun again at, on Thursday at 2.30. Um, it's on YouTube now, so go up on there if you'd like to and subscribe while you're there. But there's also likely going to be turned into a series with that and Janet where there may be one or two more episodes beyond that. So we're really excited to check out what Janet's doing. And uh, pretty neat that the employees are starting to roll up their sleeves and show off some hidden talents here. Master producer Chris Ellingson and junior reporter RJ Guba are not here today. Uh, no, they have not been suspended for fighting. But uh, they are kind of working in their laboratory for confidential resident services projects that I'm not privy to, so they're not here. Uh, but we do have a special new member of the Scott Newman Show. Yeah. Uh, here today, we have a new member that's gonna be presenting a new segment called the What If Sports Minute. And the concept here is, right now we're lacking from local US sports. There's Korean baseball happening, I believe there's some European soccer going, but. There's no baseball, there's no football, there's no basketball, there's no hockey, there's no fill in the blank. So I think there may be some UFC or maybe some uh, uh, golf specialty uh, tournaments and maybe some NASCAR, but overall we're, we're jonesing for some sports. So here today we have retired 18 year veteran, rookie of the year, 
five-time All-Star, three-time Gold Glover, four-time Silver Slugger, World Series winning, how is he not in the Hall of Fame? I don't know. Detroit Tigers second baseman, Sweet Lou Whitaker, here to bring you the sports report, if sports were actually happening this week. Sweet Lou, take it away. Hi, sports fans. This is former Major League ball player Lou Whitaker here to give you this week's What If Sports Update Minute. A look at what's happening in the world of sports if sports existed right now. In basketball, Warrior fans are still reeling with their last play season finish, but the silver lining to this year's heartache was yesterday's NBA Draft Lottery order selection as the Warriors secured the rights to the number one pick in the upcoming NBA Draft scheduled in June. In playoff news, the Lakers continue their playoff dominance, winning last night's Western Conference Finals over the other team from Los Angeles, the Clippers. In golf, after earning lines earlier this year in the Masters in April and PGA Championship in May, Tiger Woods looks to continue his incredible comeback season by winning the third leg of the major championships, the U.S. Open in June in New York. When asked for comment, Tiger merely waved to the crowd and yelled, Get in the hole! Finally, in baseball, the local teams continue their hot seasons with the A's holding off the Yankees in extra innings and the Giants on the winning side of a wild shootout in Milwaukee. Of significance, the LA Dodgers continue the unprecedented worst start in the history of Major League Baseball as they continue their losing streak to an unbelievable zero wins and 42 straight losses. That's the Sports Minute, and Sweet Lou is out of here. Thanks, Sweet Lou. Are we not blessed having Lou Whitaker here to be able to provide us our What Up Sports Minute update? Thanks, Lou. We're going to look forward to you for more segments in the future, and we're going to keep promoting the Hall of Fame opportunity to get you in the Hall at some point because you deserve to be there. We have a lot of things planned on the Scott Newman Show today. We've got a great employee interview with our little twist. Uh, we also have our episode of Will It that unfortunately got cut at the last minute on our last episode, so we've got it. I'm going to just let you know right now, our question that we're going to ask ourselves now is, will it float? So we've already done will it break. We're going to get into will it float. This will be some fun. And we're going to see our friends Chris and RJ uh, on, on that segment there. We're going to do a closing with Scott Sentiment. And uh, we should have some fun here today, guys. So thanks for being here. We'll see you after the jump. And we'll come back. See you then. Welcome back to the Scott Newman Show. Last week's Scott Six was uh, met with a little controversy. The, the subject of food will always elicit a lot of feedback and backyard barbecue foods for the holidays uh, was no different. We got quite the feedback from residents and staff alike. Uh, and, and I understand, depending on how you were raised or uh, what maybe grandpa cooked on the barbecue while you were younger, can create very firm beliefs and, uh, and a system unwilling to maybe think of uh, uh, alternative sides. Maybe I'm a little staunch in my perspectives, but wow, I also got some pretty heavy feedback. I do stand by my no mayonnaise on a hot dog concept. Ribs, uh, I do stand by the dry rub, I'm sorry. But I do understand baked beans do have a place on the uh, country backyard barbecue table. So uh, baked beans, I, I'd like to publicly apologize to you and perhaps there's a um, place in my heart that I could open up to you in the future. Right now there is no room at the inn and uh, Big Beans, I respect you but I don't like you. Moving on to today's segment though, we're going to enjoy the, uh, the outdoor weather that's been blessed to us lately. Uh, and I know it's been pretty actually hot to actually go out and walk along the property pass that we have here but our campus is absolutely beautiful at Smith Ranch Homes it's one of the biggest selling points and amenities here at Smith Ranch Homes and today's list is going to list off the top six favorite places on the Smith Ranch Homes property this doesn't mean automatically that it's outside jumping into our list right off the bat let's get into it 
down and dirty, number six. Well, this is actually right outside the uh, doors here and is indoors. So we're starting off with indoors, the art gallery. And uh, the art gallery is a great place to, uh, to bring guests through. It's an ever-changing amenity, which is great. Unfortunately, it hasn't changed in the last couple of months, I get it. Uh, but thankfully, we had a, a newer installation put up right before the shelter-in-place issue. Uh, Chris is now taking over that with his new position as resident services manager, and we look to hope to see uh, some new opportunities coming up shortly this year. Number six, art gallery. Moving on to number five, we also move outside, and this should be no surprise, but the surprise may be that it's a little low on the list. Number five is the pond. I love the pond. Uh, it's a great focus when you're driving through to say, wow, there's a body of water. Water always attracts individuals. Uh, the reason why it may be a little lower is just that the trails themselves can be uh, a little up and down, undulating. Uh, we try to keep it as safe as possible and we ask all residents and staff that go out there, please mind the safety. Um, but I also, whenever I go out there, I typically find a little rattler, a little snake on the ground, not a rattlesnake, but a snake on the ground scares me a lot um, and some other critters out there that uh, make me nervous and uh, poison oak can at times grow out there and uh, I'm a guy that gets poison oak by just looking at it so pond we like it you're a useful tool in fact side note it is actually a retention pond for all of our runoff and there may be some great plans in the future about how we can actually utilize the pond instead of just a visual tool but actually maybe an actual irrigation tool in the future. A guy can dream. Number four on the list. Well, this is a place that is kind of close to my heart. Some of you dog walkers or people that go out to North Avenue may understand and it's close to the pond. There's a little bench looking out towards, I guess you would call it Northeast. That's, it's a little bench on the clearing right on North Avenue where you look out and you see the cows customarily, uh, but you always see St. Vincent's Church right on the horizon. I feel like Bob Ross could could just roll up one day and, uh, and put out an easel and just go to town by looking at that beautiful landscaping. And uh, I invite you, if you haven't discovered the little bench, uh, go check it out. You'll know what it is when you see it. And if you know what I'm talking about, you probably got a smile on your face. So little bench, love you. Number three on the list. Well, I don't know what it is about North Avenue and right in this little area, but there are some pockets that are just quite remarkable. There's an overlook of another bench just to the, uh, in between the garden center and the pond. When you're still walking on the trail, uh, leaving the pond as you're heading west to the garden center, there's a little upward slope. Caution, again, upward slope. Please be safe. There's a little bench up there. And it's another great overlooking view of the, of this time, the farm and all the landscaping. And you even get a view of the highway, which sometimes even that's kind of nice to look at and listen to on a, on a nice warm day. So little overlook, you're right. One place above the little bench, North Avenue, you are rocking it right now. Um, I don't Number two. Well, we just alluded to it earlier and we're working our way west. You can't ignore the garden center. I just went out there yesterday, snapped some great, beautiful photos out there. We have Janet Rallman coming in and, uh, as I indicated, and doing a presentation at the Garden Center. What a remarkable amenity we have here at Smith Ranch Homes. And I love the fact that the residents have boxes assigned to them. They're able to do whatever they want. And I, I have taken a note of this. Most residents that sign up for a garden box are probably the most um, engaging residents that we have here at Smith Ranch Homes too. And so as we all age in place, I think there's something that's key in the vibrancy of life that is gardening and uh, bringing up plants, bringing up vegetables, bringing up herbs. Garden Center, you are number two on the list and you are number one in my heart. But number one in my brain, here we go. Getting into number one of the number one favorite place on the Smith Ranch Homes property. I'm gonna pause for a second. Let's talk about honorable mention. There are some places that didn't make the list this year. Um, various reasons, maybe some deferred maintenance, maybe ongoing maintenance and repair. Uh, but these are the locations that we don't wanna forget because at some point, 
Smith Ranch Homes needs to either tend to them or is in the process of tending to them and will be quite remarkable and could easily be one, two, or three on this list. These locations include the terrace, the plaza fountain, the streams throughout the property, the waterfalls, and of course the bocce ball court area. We understand right now there's a lot of emotion. Why aren't they working? Why aren't they on? Why can't we play on it? We get it. And uh, this place is quite the whack-a-mole of all the projects that we manage around here. Hopefully we see you soon, honorable mention. So we get back to number one. This is a spot that I wonder how many residents truly know about this. This is tucked away between building 100 and 200 in a nice grassy grove with some redwood trees that are surrounded. It's on the western perimeter of our property. And if you're in 100 and 200, you gotta know about it. But unless you're a dog walker from other buildings or villa owners, you may not know about this. And I encourage you, Nate, demand you to go take some time and take a look at this area. It's a beautiful, serene location that I've always wanted to go out one day with my baseball glove or a soccer ball and kick the ball around or throw the ball around or just enjoy a nap. But of course, I don't live here, I work here, and that would probably be frowned upon. But building 100, 200 Redwood Grove grassy area, as uh, I call it, because I have a lack of a better phrase, you are the number one location. You are one location of many places here, and I would love to hear from the residents here about what are your favorite locations that you like to go and visit. The pool's great. We've got a wellness spa. We've got, uh, you know, even the grill room patio is a great place to enjoy some food. Love to hear from you. Uh, that's Scott Six for today. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back and uh, wrap up the Scott Newman Show. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Scott Newman Show. We're going to jump into the employee interview portion, which is becoming quite the uh, resident favorite. We're going to do another twist. We don't make any episode the same here at the Scott Newman Show. We're not going to go back to my house and do an infant interview, but this time around we're going to do a conference call, a phone-in interview. You guys probably didn't think we could do stuff like this. We'll see how the technology goes. There's lots of reasons and opportunities for this to not work, but Special guest today we have on the phone, caller, Terry Pellegrini of, of the accounting department. Terry, do you, can you hear me? I can. Hi, Scott. Hi, Hi, everybody. Hi, Terry. Thanks for joining us. Terry, just so you know, um, first off, the good news is since you're not physically here, I don't have to wear a mask for the interview, so that's great. Um, but with you not being here, it's kind of challenging to have a conversation by myself. So kind of like a lot of sports are doing right now abroad, uh, they kind of put in some dummies, if you will. So over here, Terry, just so you know, you're, you're currently uh, presented as a can of baked beans, and everybody on the Scott Newman Show knows how I feel about baked beans. Uh, there's also an oversized jar of bay leaves fitted with a nice mask and a cowboy hat. So, so thanks for being here today. <laughs> thanks for having me. All right, Terry, uh, for those that don't know you, I mentioned earlier you work for the accounting department. What's your position and how many years have you been here? So I'm the bookkeeper. I've been there over 10 years. Um, I think 11 now. 10 years. Another on the long list of employees here that have dual digit seniority. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. You've been here for 10 or 11 years, but I bet a lot of residents don't know about the Terry behind the Terry Pellegrini. Where are you from originally? So I was born at Ross General, which I don't think is around anymore. Oh. Uh, I grew up in San Rafael. I graduated from Terra Linda High School. Go Trojans! In Los Ranchitos. All right. Um, a lot of people remember the house we lived in because it had a merry-go-round horse out front. Yes, I yes. remember that. Yes. Yeah, that was you. Okay. Now, were you the only uh, Pellegrini child in the household, or did you have some siblings join you too? Yeah, I have a sister who's two years older. She's a retired San Rafael teacher and lives in Woodacre. Mm -hmm. And then I have a younger brother. My brother Paul lives in Alaska. He's had a succession of different types of jobs. Um, he retired from the Forest Service years ago, and now he's back doing that again. 
I've heard baby brothers are typically a headache. Would you define your brother as a headache like my sisters define me as a headache? You know, it's hard to, he was like four years younger than, than I was and we like to pick on him. That's <laughs> what I remember. Okay, okay. But you still probably looked out for him though, huh? As the big sister. I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Well, while you were growing up, what did you want to be when you grew up? Did you want to be a senior bookkeeper at Smith Ranch Homes, or did you, uh, did you have other ideas, like an astronaut? Well, no. You know, I uh, we went to Catholic school, so I'm sure at some point I wanted to be a nun. <laughs> Sister but, uh, Terry. that never happened, and okay. then I probably wanted to be a teacher. I never wanted to be a doctor because I don't like blood. Uh, okay. And after I graduated from college, I wished I'd been a marine biologist. I think everybody wants to be a marine biologist for at least one semester in school. I don't know what it is, if it's the dolphins or not, but was it the first biology class you had to take? No, 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 because, you know, I, when I went to college, I graduated. I have a BA in um, Administration of Public Re Recreation. Ah. So after I used up all my college money and got out in the real world, I thought to myself, I really wish I was a marine biologist, but it was, you know... <laughs> not going to happen. What were some of the first jobs you had? Anything kind of unusual or unique worth noting? No, I was a recreation day camp person all Ooh. the summers while I was in school. And then when I got out of school and couldn't find a job in that area, I worked for a commodity trading firm for a while. And then I was an expediter at a printing company. And I finally ended up um, refrigeration company um, accounting and sales. You said camp counselor or counselor. Was this with children or, or what was kind of the, what were you um, overseeing at that point? Yeah, I worked for the city of San Rafael. So I was overseeing teenagers and also the younger kids on the playground um, summer camps. I, uh, I was a YMCA camp counselor once in my life and I think I found uh, pee and vomit on my shoes from time to time. Did that ever come across your way as a camp counselor? No, I remember we uh, had an overnight at Boyd Park there in San Rafael. Yeah. And there was a lot of skunks up there, so I made sure I was in the middle of all the kids because they all wanted to be around you, you know. They didn't understand I was hiding from the skunks. <laughs> yeah. That must have been a while back because I don't think anybody wants to overnight in Boyd Park nowadays if you've been through there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, while again you're growing up, this is, I, I like to dig into this a little bit. Any celebrity crushes you had back then that, uh, that you're free to acknowledge now, or even some celebrity crushes today that you see on, uh, on the big screen that, that you're willing to divulge today in front of the residents? Well, you know, we grew up during the Beatles era, so of mm. course everybody loved the Beatles. But on my Zoom currently, I have a picture of George Clooney in my background. <laughs> George Clooney. Why does every woman like George Clooney? What is it about him? Why wouldn't we? Look at him. <laughs> so, so does that mean you're also a George Harrison fan for the Beatles? No, no, not George. Oh. You it's were, always Paul or John. Paul or, usually that's how it is. And then poor Ringo is forgotten about, unfortunately. <laughs> poor Ringo, yeah. <laughs> so, um, fast forward to today. What keeps you interested? You know, what do you like doing as hobbies and special interests outside of Smith Ranch Homes? Well, I like, you know, outdoor activities. I used to do a lot of skiing. Um, I've skied in Switzerland on the Matterhorn. Wow. And I like boating and anything with water. And I do a lot of reading. And I think I've been, since I've been quarantined here, I've read about 20 books in the last two months. <laughs> um, yeah. I like to do anything. If someone wants to do it, I'm happy to do it with them. All right. So you're up for from almost anything, huh? That's that's good to know. You have an adventurous. Yeah, but not with running with you out at um, China Camp. Yeah, I have been. I've been trying to tempt Terry to join me uh, to run the trails at China Camp for what, Terry? About six years now, and and I'm <laughs> waiting for a yes, but I never get one. No. No. Yeah. That that's usually how it is. Uh, you mentioned quarantined, Terry. So. Your job has kind of availed you to be able to work remotely full time since the middle of March. So tell us how it's been while you've been working remotely and, and you haven't you know, been at Smith Ranch. Do you miss us? And uh, have you enjoyed working at home and, and kind of being uh, based in your, in your living room? Well, there's pros and cons. I miss all the people at work. You know, you don't get any good gossip by the uh, coffee machine if you're not there. Yeah. Um, there's no IT guy here at home, 
so that's hard, but I can roll out of bed into my office without having to commute. I'm, I'm sure there's some sort of harassment training that doesn't allow me to ask you, like, what are you wearing right now? That's getting a little edgy for the Scott Newman show. But I know when I've been working remotely, uh, there have been times, maybe not during this heat wave, but I will be wearing my sweatpants until about 4.30 in the afternoon. Do you find yourself still kind of in your pajamas and, and kind of primo casual now at, when you're working at home? Um, no, I do not wear my pajamas. I get up and put on yoga pants and a shirt. Okay. Well, we'll so keep it at like that. going to work, but I do get up and get dressed. Okay. Well, th thank you. That's good. That's good, and I probably dove into more than I needed to right there. Um, we've got a, uh, a, an opportunity for you to talk to the residents. You haven't spoken to them in, in a while, unless you've maybe spoken to them about your, their bills from time to time. But on the Scott Newman Show, uh, Scott Six today was about the favorite places on the Smith Ranch Homes campus. Do you have somewhere that you kind of find as, as a, a nice place to go to when you're on your break or somewhere on the property that you've always enjoyed seeing and being around? Well, I like to walk around all of the property and there's this one spot, there's a lawn, I think it's in front of building 200, <laughs> that's like a lawn a curved area all kind of out by itself. I think it'd be perfect for a wedding. Someone should have a wedding there. Are there some redwood trees right around there? Yes, all around the outside of it. It's a beautiful little spot. Terry, people are probably not going to believe this. We didn't coordinate this. You just nailed the number one answer on Scott's six list. That was a little bit of a curveball. So, wow. You, I'm going to pull back here. I'm going to give you a couple of seconds here to speak directly to the residents. Uh, floor is yours. You've got a lot of residents that have been sheltering in place since the middle of March. They're getting antsy, and they love hearing messages from us to them. Take it away. Well, I would just like to say when I was there on the last day, which I can't remember if it was like March 15th, it was a Friday in the um, um, cocktail lounge, and all the people were saying, you know, I won't see you for a while, goodbye, and that was just so sad, it made me really want to <clears throat> cry. And, um, you know, they keep saying on the news, we're all in this together, and I'm t really tired of hearing we're all in this together, but in fact, we are all in this together, and it'll be nice when we can all get out and about and see each other again and make sure everybody's okay. Terry, yeah. thanks for being here. We're gonna, before we let you go though, we're gonna do uh, a, another segment of the interview that we've had a lot of fun with. We're gonna do word association. And this is something that you're not aware of and it could be a disastrous flop or it could be comedy gold. Let's see about this. But I've got 10 words or phrases that I'm gonna pepper at you right now. It's not going to take rocket science. I just want the first thing that pops into your head that's hopefully G or maybe PG rated um, that comes to your mind. And, and let's see what gets into the inner psyche of Terry Pellegrini uh, when prompted with random words and random phrases. You, are you ready for this? Uh, hopeful. Let's see what happens. All right. Number one. And we're going to just go back and forth, rapid fire. First one, calculator. Ten key. 10 key. Sounds like an accounting tool of the trade. Waterfalls. Yosemite. Absolutely. Ladybugs. Pretty. <laughs> yes, they are. Okay, here we go. Get ready for this one. Internal Revenue Service. <laughs> Confusing. <laughs> yeah. But Terry, you're great on that. We, uh, we go to Terry quite a bit on her, uh, her acumen when it comes to the IRS and taxes. Okay, no laughing. Italy. Rome. I'll give you another opportunity here. Italy. Family. Oh, Terry is, Terry's family is from Italy, that's good. Okay, master producer Chris Ellingson. IT guy. <laughs> right? <laughs> Although he does have a new role officially, but he's never going to not be the IT guy around here. Okay. <laughs> Number seven, quarantine. Boring. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. But hopefully this next word will make it more entertaining. Alcohol. I had to go to the store a lot of times. <laughs> Shopping. Hopefully not too much. What is your alcohol of choice, Terry? Champagne. 
Champagne, nice. Okay, number nine, we're almost done here. Generally accepted accounting principles. Gap. <laughs> yes, that is what it is, exactly, gap. And finally, number 10, Smith Ranch Homes. Beautiful. Isn't that the truth? Terry Pellegrini, thank you for joining us. We've had some fun getting to know you. And residents, when we get back to realities of life, Say hi to Terry when you see her on the property or give her a call when you got a complaint about your bill. She'll be there for you. <laughs> Terry, thanks again. We'll see you soon. All right, everyone have a good day. Thanks, Terry. All right, everybody, we're going to take a break here. We're going to get back after this. This is Scott Sentiment. I want to acknowledge the board of directors and John Mara, the general manager today. This is going to be a short sentiment because I think there doesn't need to be much said other than thank you. The board and John have been working tirelessly during this coronavirus shelter in place period. The number of executive and emergency session meetings that the board has been taking is, is quite remarkable. I have never seen like it in the over 15 years that I've worked here at Smith Ranch Homes. Whether it's employee issues, payroll protection plans, homeowner issues, housekeeping services, symptom checks, coronavirus positive cases or potential cases, it's, it never stops. The board is working hard, John's working hard, the employees and residents are staying strong. This is a remarkable time and place. At times of conflict, you always need a captain on the ship. And board of directors, thank you for being that great stalwart of a captain, keeping this ship in line and, uh, and definitely meeting some rocky waters and waves. Thank you again for tuning into the Scott Newman Show. We'll see you next week. And if you have any feedback or questions or things that you'd like to see on the show, please drop us a line at the email below. Have a great weekend. Wash your hands. God bless.